will record. Perfect. All right, and we're set. So why don't we start being respectful to the people that are here and we will have everybody jump in um, on their own time. I'm Irene Kishansky from Keller Williams Portfolio Realty in Toronto. Very honored and grateful today to have my new friend, Jack Smith, uh, with us sharing his knowledge on the extra level of service that he provides to all his buyers and sellers along with his team. I say new friend because our relationship, like many over the last 18 months, has been born out of the Pivot Shift group. Thank you, James Shaw, if you're seeing this somewhere for setting up the group. Uh, Jack will attest uh, to the fact that we created some incredible relationships out of that group. Uh, and even though a lot of us haven't met each other in person, we kind of feel like we're family. And Jack has an amazing team and we were very grateful to have him join us today to share some of his experience with us. So Jack, I'll leave you the floor. Well, thank you, Irene, for the honor to be here. And you know, when you asked me about what what you want me to do, I, I think that one of the things that we've experienced and certainly listening to you and the level of service that you deliver and a lot of the agents that um, are on the Pivot and Shift program deliver, um, we're all sort of in sync with that. Uh, and so I decided what I would do is sort of, I never really wrote down what we do because I just, we just know what we do, right? We, I guess we have to have the systems, models and tools and now we have a new system, model and tool, right? So let me just start with this, you know, um, the first thing is that, you know, we were discussing this this morning, we're about 99% referral based. Um, my partner Divya has a real strong sphere. Jake has a younger sphere. Julia has a military sphere and a, a University of, of Tampa sphere and other people from around the country. She's joined some of the military groups as well. So 99% of our work, and we, you know, this was questioned this morning, but 99% of our work really is referral work. We do do lead gen every single day. Jake has done an extraordinary job with that, with building relationships with people, um, as Divya and I and Julia have as well. Um, but he, Jake, really works on a higher end luxury scale more than anything else. He does sell um, other homes, you know, 500,000 and up. But his primary sphere, his big, big sphere has been um, selling to the luxury market with, with elderly people. So he's charming and he's nice, he's bright. And they see that, they appreciate all that we do. And we go in actually as a team. So when we have a listing, if Julie has a listing or Divi has a listing or Jake has a listing, and I'm looking at them as I'm speaking, this is really weird standing up here looking at a speaker. <laughs> to see you. You come say hi. Here's hi. Jake. Cheers. This is Jake. Come say hi. Hi, hi Jake. everybody. I'm Jake. Nice to meet everybody. Thanks hey, for having Jake. us. We appreciate oh, it. Divya. Hi. Divya. Divya. And here's hi. Julia. Hi. Here's here's Julia. Julia. Here's Julia. You, you know what, right Jack? Jack, what? just before, oh my gosh, <laughs> they're all there. Uh, just before we, we move on, I think uh, I apologize. I didn't actually share with our, our uh, audience where you're from. So for anybody who doesn't oh. know, Jack is in St. Petersburg, Florida. And uh, we in Toronto, there's a lot of us here from Toronto uh, are blessed with a very high average price point. And actually David has just asked about your, your price point. So maybe you can share with that uh, share that with us. Uh, I think some Toronto agents get a little bit uh, jaded because they're so used to high price points. So maybe you, before you get into the service part, you can share with us what your price points are for regular homes as well as luxury. I would say our average price point is what, 725, 740? Our That's our average sold. Our average, average sold is 725, 740. However, last year, um, you and I discussed this at one time, Irene, we sold a $22,000 boat slip and we sold a five and a half million dollar house. So we run the gamut. Uh, there's really is we serve every single customer as if they're a two million dollar home buyer or seller. We treat everybody the same, so they get the same level of service. Um, and really, believe it or not, it's those people that are more impressed with our level of service than the higher end market because they expect it. Right? That's one of the things that you expect in the luxury market that you delivered white glove service. So that's really what we try to deliver. And, and, you know, what I, what I talk about, and it was actually a customer that said to me, he said, Jack, your team doesn't deliver five-star service, you deliver seven-star service. So I had to go look that up and see what that was. Um, and then when I looked at it, I realized, okay, we really do a lot of stuff that is seven-star service. So we will do anything from um, our open houses, and I'll discuss that in just a second. When we go to an open house, if everything's not ship shape, we go an hour early. Um, we do a lot of things that people don't normally do. Um, I'm also on the faculty of Ignite, and Jake has just joined the faculty of Ignite as well. Um, and we do things a little bit different. 
Um, and it's really just because it's how we operate. I don't know that anybody trained us to do it. We just do it. It just comes natural to us to go the extra mile. Does that make sense, Irene? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, and it's, you know, that's great. And now because you're teaching this, you've taken what you're doing from here and put it into paper so that it can actually become a system for you and for somebody else. Right. Right. Well, I just, I just thought that would be important that everybody have an idea. Um, you know, and when I ran this by everybody this morning to look over the draft that I had done, they said, oh, my God, we really do do all this. And so, you know, when you're doing it, you don't know what you're doing. It like you, you become the conscious competent at what you're doing yes. and running a team, right? Yes. So it just becomes part of our nature. Um, and people do respect it um, and really acknowledge that we have one customer that's we would close in on Friday who's moving from here to North Carolina. And we have uh, she was actually referred to us um, by another broker here in the town because her agency was not doing a good job with the customer. So that was a real honor oh, wow. to people like that. Um, we were really, really shocked when I was shocked when I got the call and I said, are you sure? She said, absolutely sure. I know, I know that you'll take care of them because I watch what you do and I know what you do. She's been trying to hire us, but that's not gonna happen. But you know, that's the way it is. Um, so let me just go over a little Irene, if I can, sort of what we do. Sure. Does that sound okay to do? Perfect. Okay. So we work in the greater Tampa, Tampa Bay area, which includes St. Petersburg, Brandon. So if you could take, um, for lack of better words, if you could take the Tampa Bay being right here and the Gulf of Mexico being here, we work in all the cities that are all the way around it. Mm -hmm. St. Petersburg is a peninsula and it's surrounded by water. And that's where our office is. But we primarily work here in this area. But we've gone, Julia's gone as far as an hour and a half south to sell homes. And we've gone as far as three hours north to sell homes. Wow. So it's where a customer really wanted to buy a house in this particular town. We went up, Julia, I mean, um, Divya and Jake went up, found the house. We worked the contract out and it, so on and so forth. Um, so there's not anything we won't do or any travel we won't do as long as everybody's nice. And I really say that because one of the things that moved, brought me to St. Petersburg from Manhattan was I woke up one morning and realized everybody's nice here. It was just a normal way of life, right? Just it's, It was just really, really weird. But I woke up and realized that. So you know, the most important thing to us is when we bring people into the Tampa Bay area, or even if they're already here, is that we're ambassadors for the, for the neighborhood. So the, encompassing the whole entire Bay. Um, and that's one of the things I think that really, really sets us apart from everybody else is that we really, really cherish where we live. Um, it makes a difference for sure. Right. And I think one of the things that we have started, I don't want to say have started, we really, really times 10 do well, is we anticipate the, the customer's needs before they're, they're presented to us. So I'll give you an example. We had a, a recent sale that we did, or we're in process, process of the sale right now. Um, it was somebody from my square dancing group. Now, mind you, I moved here five years ago. I didn't know a soul. So I had to do things that I'd never done in my life. And how I was going to do that was when I came to Ignite Training, they told me to get involved in things and I just got involved in anything anybody asked, anybody asked me to do. So they asked me to go to the grocery store. I went to the grocery store. They said they were going to take their dog for a walk. I went for the walk. I never knew who they were going to know. And that gradually um, morphed into other things. And my church had a, a square dancing group um, uh, that was on uh, Monday nights. Um, and I thought, you know, I'm going to try this. I've never done it before. I went in and from my square dancing group, which I had never done in my life, um, you know, you can imagine me doing do -si does that really doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what it was. Um, that year, I, my first year, I got over $3 million worth of referrals. So um, we're, I just, you know, um, I work the crowd for lack of better words. I'm very much a high D, but more of me as an I, to be honest. So, um, and I pay attention to the INS stuff, but then I go back into my D when I have to, but then I go back by myself when I need to. Um, you know, and, uh, and I'm going to re re read this verbatim because I think it's an important thing to say. The seven star experience is delivered to anyone that is part of the process of purchasing a home, leasing a home, because we also rent homes here, or listing a home, starting with the referral source, going to the home inspectors, using the title engines, because all of this garners us more referrals. We've had title companies refer us business. We've had home inspectors refer us business. Um, and needless to say, our sphere does that well. We do our very best to create a lasting first impression. Um, I wear a bow tie because I'm a banker from Manhattan and it's what I'm most comfortable in. And people down here will sell houses and flip flops and tank tops and shorts. And it's just not my style. I just can't do it. Um, 
You, you gotta know, have your style. Well, I just, it's just what I do, you know, just what I'm more comfortable with. Um, when we have our conversations with people, like we're having a, where's our event? Like, uh, can we see this? Yeah, tomorrow, yeah, is that up here? Yep. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow night, we're gonna have a popsicle event. We have a custom popsicle store here in town that has, I guess, over a hundred flavors of popsicles. So we're gonna have a community event tomorrow night uh, with our client base. And we've sent out, um, what is that thing that, Twilio? Twilio. They send things out through Twilio. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not all this tech. Text. Text. Pardon me? Automated text. So I'm, come on. I'm going to have Silvio tell you what he did, did so you understand some of the text. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So what we do, we use Twilio, which is available to all agents at KW through command. I recommend signing up for it. It's cheap. You can't get cheaper than that. It's. I think it's roughly $5 if you want to do the small subscription, which is 1,500 text messages, which is plenty. Um, if you want to get the word out of a client event or a mass text, you know, just checking in on it for storms. When a storm comes through, we send it to our database. It's another touch for us so we can see how they're doing, make sure everyone's okay. And people like that when you check in on them to make sure they're okay. So we try to leave a lasting impression on clients that we actually really do care. We're not, this is relationship based for us. It's not transactional by any means. So I think that's the lasting impression that we leave. But Twilio helps us to stay in touch with them. So I recommend it to any agent coming into KW to get a Twilio, send out mass text to everybody, check in on them, and promote events like we're doing for the Pop School Pop. -up. So it's just, and we do it weekly. We plan our events out two weeks beforehand, and then or or more depending on the event. This is a brief little end of summer thing for kids are getting back to school. Summer's rolling out, so it's one last touch we can get them in, in this uh, in the summer months. So yeah, use Twilio. It saves our it saves our lives. I have a I have a question for you on on Twilio because you guys are more relationship based than than volume. How do you make those mass texts not sound or look like mass texts? How do you personalize them? I'll jump in there for a second. Um, Sylvia is a great writer. Uh, I came from a writer. My father was a writer, so I write as well. But I don't write as elegantly, and I have to say it that way, as Silvio and Jake do. So it's really a collaboration. The majority of the time now, Silvio knows what I want to say and how I want to say it. And he and Jake collaborate on getting that done. And, and Jake is a partner with Divi and I as well. So they, there's a lot of collaboration that we do. I just asked something a little bit earlier about something we need to do. They said, oh, we already did that. So, you know, these things come to my mind. They already, they're running the team. We're just showing up at the business. Does that make sense? That's great. Yeah, we do, we do a lot. I mean, we really don't want to sound like robots coming across. That's why we do things like the storm touch. That's just checking in. That's, you know, that's heartfelt, you know, and it's easy since, I mean, we pour our hearts into our business. So it's easier for us, I would say, to come off uh, from a place of gratitude than anything else. So we just make sure that they know this is just a friendly touch or reminder. We're not always pitching them real estate. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to have a relationship. So when they think that they want to make a move on real estate, whether it's lease, buy, invest, sell, whatever they want, they think of us because we're nice, I guess. <laughs> yes, the other thing is I want to touch base with that is last year, I guess it was a year and a half ago, we had another hurricane came through and we all got together in the morning. We get gathered together. We, uh, we went out and got uh, gloves and brooms and right. all kinds of stuff. Um, and we went out to houses uh, to see if we could help other agents in our office. So not only do we participate, you know, just with our clients, we just as his, well, participate with our agents as well. Does that make any sense? That's terrific. It's really coming from contribution for sure. Well, we, I learned that here. It's not that I wouldn't have done it before, but, you know, we have that whole language. Kill, kill, I call it killeries. Um, yeah. and, and the things that we do that are just natural for us to do. Um, you know, from the listing side experience, Irene, just tell me a little about how you're listings go so I can sort of bleed into that with what we do? Well, it's it's very dependent on each agent, Jack. I mean, certainly okay. in, in our market center, we really focus on uh, helping our agents do an extra level of service, which is why this topic was so interesting uh, to everyone. You know, for, for our team, we also have, uh, you know, we have four full-time admin people who are supporting our, us as, as salespeople. So we really, really focus on the service. 
And we do, I mean, for, for us, we do interior uh, cleaning, we do exterior landscaping, we will do windows uh, for our clients. We will help them organize decluttering. Uh, Christina, who's actually on this call with us, uh, she's now our full-time concierge. So, uh, you know, she and Todd last Friday were helping our seller move things from other parts of the house into the basement before the stagers came. Uh, so that that's sort of all part of the prep. And then there's all of the marketing that we do with, uh, with you know, drones and um, virtual tours, uh, 3D walkthroughs. And then for us, you know, we're very lucky not in Ontario when we have a deal that's done, it's done. And we as I'm saying at the KB team, we, we check in with our clients periodically through the process to make sure they're on track, but we don't have nearly the same amount of work that you guys have in Florida and most of the US has from the time the deal is done to the time you hope it closes. When our deals are done, they're done. You're just and, waiting for the money. Yeah. Got and uh, we don't have title companies. We just have, we have lawyers. We have one lawyer on each side. Uh, they don't even leave the office anymore. They do all of the title transfer electronically. And it's, it's a very, very simple process. I think if, if more agents in Ontario understood how difficult things were for you guys, once your offer is accepted, I think they'd be a lot more grateful for our process for sure. Oh, that's good to hear because I didn't really know that that's how your process was. Ours is really not. It sounds like it's labor intensive, but we've created a system so it doesn't become labor intensive. We know what to do. So um, let me just start with what we do with a listing appointment. So when we get a listing call, um, we go out with uh, 18 roses. It's a, a, when we go to Sam's Club, it's nothing fancy. When we go to Sam's Club, we get 18 roses. We bring them back and either Philip wraps them up or Sylvia wraps them up, somebody in the office. We show up with that and we have a great little factory, uh, not factory, um, bakery. bakery bakery here in town. It's a, it's a French bakery um, and we pick up uh, I don't know, all kinds of pastries and stuff. It's, you know, between $15 and $25. And we show up with every single listing with that. So when we go in the door like that, they're really pretty much blown away, especially because they don't know who we are. And they've never been treated like that before. So what we try to do is create an experience where they want to invite us back and they want us to be part of their lives. Does that make sense? She's, she's not with me. She's not there? Oh yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm typing, I'm typing seriously. Yes, Jack, thank you. <laughs> it's okay, it's all, it's all good. Okay, good. So that really sort of sets us apart from everybody else because we know nobody else does that. Um, at, the, um, at the listing appointment, we also create a book when we go in on a listing appointment and it has all the, the facts about the house, all the facts about us, our documents, so on and so forth. And because Pat, you know, Pat Strail from the calls? Yes. Mm -hmm. She in Pennsylvania has developed the system. This is Shutterfly. This is the, this was a present, but this is similar to what we do. And we go out with everything in this book. It's a bound book. So when we were doing a presentation, we leave the book there. It has the contract. It has all the addendums. Um, it has all the information that, that comes from the county or the state on the house. We talk about the different permits that have been done on the house. Have they been closed out? Um, I don't know if you guys have that up there, but we have a system here in Florida we do. That, that, that sometimes the permits have not been closed out by the yeah. contractor. So yeah. we check all that out to make sure all that's done as well. Does that make sense? Yes, and that, that's actually, we've started putting that into our pre-listing process because we've had a few surprises. We've had uh, a few cases where even the owner didn't know there was outstanding permits and they only found out before closing. So it was a big scramble. So we do that all the time now. Good, good, good. You know, we're trying to create an elevated experience so that, um, that they're beyond happy with us. And through the process, you know, Tony Baroni has that, the promise thing. Mm -hmm. We have the commitment, we do the commitment and we're asking for referrals constantly. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It could be a referral. It could be a referral. <laughs> it, <could> be a <laughs> referral. <laughs> it is. It is. We get about, um, let's grab that, Jake. Yeah, yeah. Just, we probably get, um, in all honesty, four to five referrals a week. We got two this morning. Wow. Um, and a lot of them are long term. They're not, you know, they're not immediate. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just lost Jack. <laughs> I better text him. I don't, I don't even know if they know that they're off. 
We lost you. Oh no. <laughs> All right, does anybody else check on permits before they go out on the listing? No, we've got, we've got a lot of people hiding off camera here. <laughs> we, we do now. Do you now? Yeah, did you have a bad experience? Yeah, yeah. What happened? Um, well, actually it just happened a couple weeks ago, but it wouldn't, we wouldn't have known. Um, the people went to get a building permit and they found out that when the other people closed in the garage, they never got it, they never got permits. So this created a problem where the driveway is technically illegal. Okay. okay. Um, I'm still trying to get so, the, who knows? We, we had an experience last year where we were getting to closing and it was our listing and our the, the buyers for our listing, their lawyer found an open permit from the previous owners. Uh, so our sellers didn't even know about it because when they bought, their lawyer didn't search permits, which I guess is not uncommon. Yeah, I know for uh, for lawyers. So they, um, uh, yeah, and it, it was it was it was a mess. It was a mess because it was a lowered basement. Uh, so it was a pretty big job. And uh, yeah, we uh, we had to really, really scramble and get extra title insurances. And yeah, it was it was quite the process. Did you find did you find the open permit though when you did the search? That was when we started doing the searches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was our oh, we better start doing this. Yeah, right yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe we'll check in. Fern, how have you been doing? You've been on the uh, script practice with us. And you're on mute. You're on mute. Here I am. There yeah. you are. Thanks for uh, saying hello today, this morning. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. It's great. Thank you. So you know what? I'm just going to mute myself for a minute, and I'm going to call them because maybe they're not. I, I imagine they know that we're not on screen anymore. But I'm just going to give Jack a quick call. They did not realize how long they were out. So they're coming <laughs> back in. Yeah, they 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 just realized it. Just a couple of minutes. We're all right. <coughs> Heidi, it's nice to see you here. We haven't seen your face in a little while. Maybe she's just in the background. All right. Well, and Patty, nice to see you too. Are you uh, are you camera ready? Nice to see you too. I'm just using a different device today, so. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, cool. There's Patty. Of course, the weekend. She Patty, just, Patty, no, you're on mute. Hello. Yeah, we can say that. There we go. Hey, Hi, Jack. Hanson. Hi, Patty. You're Hi, back. Hi. <laughs> where, where did I leave off, Irene? I don't remember where I left off. Uh, you were creating an elevated experience. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll give you, we'll give you back to the floor. Did I talk to you about the listing book? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, so I'll just give you a little experience that we had with a recent customer. Um, he was also referred to me from my square dancing group. Uh, they had this two bedroom, I mean, this four bedroom, four bath, uh, two car garage house on the water that every single surface in the house was covered with something. So um, they were very anxious to get the house listed. It took them four weeks to pack the house. So they had four 10 by 20, I don't know what that is in meters, um, garage bins stuffed okay, with all we're, we're good. With, we're good with feet. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know. I, I can't tell you meters, I'm sorry. I that's okay, 10 by 20, that's big. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a, that's a one car garage for lack of better words. So they had four of those stuffed with their personal stuff. 
And then we asked them to leave some of their stuff and we restaged the house with some of the stuff that we bring in um, because they didn't have anything. How do I put this nicely? I'll just say it the way it is. They didn't have anything of a caliber of a luxury home. Right. Yeah. You know, they had, um, I don't know what this, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything more than that. I don't want to sound like a snob, but we brought all kinds of luxury stuff in. I think we get it. <laughs> okay, good. I just want to make sure. Um, so those are some of the things that we do. And a lot of people don't do that here. They make everybody do it on their own. And for us, uh, as, as there's no second, you know, first impression, no second chance for a first impression when you're doing a listing appointment or meeting with the buyer, there's no second chance for when a buyer comes into the house either, right? To look at the house and it doesn't look like it's a luxury home. Um, another thing that we explained to them, and these are things that Irene, I don't know if you guys are allowed to do, but we circle prospect every listing. We door knock every listing. We put out 250 flyers. We'll go out on a, on a we try to go live on a Friday. And we'll go out on a Thursday and door knock the entire neighborhood and invite the um, neighbors in for an open house for the first hour of the open house. And on Friday night, we will do a twilight open house. Mm -hmm. So from depending upon when twilight is, we'll do a six to seven, six to eight. And we invite the neighbors in to come take a look at the house. So we get rid of the looky loos, right? Yeah, that's and great. Well, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl, who's on this call, uh, she and her husband, Ed, are going to be doing an evening open house tonight. So, right. uh, you know, it would be great for her to, to hear some of that feedback from you. We have just started to open up for door knocking again. Uh, okay. again you know, our team, we've been door knocking for about two weeks, but we were also quite restricted in that. Got it. And uh, I don't know if Cheryl, you'll have a chance to do that before tonight, but you can certainly do it tomorrow before your weekend open house. That was going to be one of the things that I wanted to share with you, Cheryl. And another thing that we'll do is we'll go in an hour. We put out 50 signs, at least 50 signs of the neighborhood. Um, on every major intersection, we have a sign. So um, that's one of the things I learned actually in bold with um, Kate Geinger out of Colorado. He was my bold professor. And he also, and he also um, did the same thing. So I learned that from him. Uh, and we put out a lot of signs. It probably takes us about an hour to set up. And then we'll go in an extra half hour early to make sure all the counters are clean. Are you still there? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm yeah. looking and now I can see you back there in the refraction of the glass. So I don't know if you're here or not. So it disappears. I don't know. Um, we'll go out and make sure the toilets are taken care of. The sinks are clean. All the, all the chrome is wiped down, all those things. And I don't, you know, these are things that we just do naturally. I didn't know it was an extra step that we took. It's just because we want the house presented on the best possible level. Um, yesterday I had to go to a walkthrough uh, on a house that we're, that we've sold. And the woman was exhausted. Um, and I said, where's your vacuum? There was dust on all the vents of where her air conditioning was. Mm. She said, I can't even believe you're doing this. I said, what's well, what we do. I don't want somebody to come in through a walkthrough and complain that you got dust on your, on your louvers. But you know, you don't always see that. So for us, it's just a natural thing to do. I know it's a little bit crazy. We sweep the floors. We make sure everything is outside. Make sure there's no leaves anywhere. We blow the leaves away. Um, I don't know, it's just what we do. You guys do that? We, we bring in a cleaning crew for that. We don't do it ourselves. Okay. No, I'm talking about just before the open house. Oh, oh, well, there's always that extra little bit that's needed. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, I'm, I couldn't imagine you not doing that, Irene. <laughs> no, we do bring in a cleaning crew when somebody's out of the house. We do bring in a cleaning crew as well. Um, and we, and, and nine times out of 10, um, we have the customer pay for it. Sometimes they refuse to. But because we want it done, we want it in ship top shape, we just pay for it. We actually had one client that we moved, paid to move her out um, because she wasn't moved. And we were closing in two days. So we got our movers in, wow. brought the movers in, and we got the stuff into, we to go back to They had a condo at the beach, so they stored the stuff at the condo at the beach. Now you disappeared again. No. Oh, you got her? Okay. No. Okay. Great. Here. Just checking. Um, the other thing is through the whole process, when we go out to visit them, we'll bring um, uh, pizza or we'll bring bagels or we'll bring cold sodas just to check on them, make sure everything is good whenever we have to go out for any kind of an appointment with them to check the house out. Um, we always show up at the door with something. Sometimes it's a bottle of wine. Sometimes it's a box, box of chocolates. Um, but we're sort of it's like the uh, we're always teasing them with more food um, and making them feel important, right? Um, on the buying side of the house, um, when people come in to see us, we and I'm sure you do all this as well, Irene, so probably a lot of it's redundant, 
but uh, people in our office don't do this. We're the only ones that do it. We set up a glass of water or a bottle of water. They have a pen, they have a piece of paper. So when we're taking notes, we can talk about things. Do you guys do that? Well, we're doing things mostly by Zoom. We haven't had in-person meetings. Well, that, okay. okay, good, okay. We have not really done a lot of Zoom listings. I have to say, I think we did one, um, but we have sold homes um, around the world from people from, from around the world. We had one that we sold from South Africa. It was strictly by this. With the, with the with the with FaceTime, right? You're walking around the house, and they got it loud and clear. Um, and he came in and he gutted the house. There was nothing wrong with the house, but he came in and gutted the house. It was kind of crazy. Wow. Um, when I'm showing homes personally, um, do you guys do that up there? Yes. Okay. Um, when I do that, when I'm doing that personally, it's better. Uh, it was two business business. Zoom. 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 You guys are set. Okay. You could. You're the one that taught me what I'm doing. <laughs> That's our former team leader. Our team leader has uh, now become an agent. She stepped down as she's become an agent because she saw all the money the agents were making. She wasn't making it. <laughs> and you know what that's like. Anyhow, so when we set things up like that, um, when I go out and show a home, I always have the customers in the back of my car. And I always have a bottle of water in the car and I have a treat bag there as well. Um, and that's just sort of, so if they're, if they're snacking, and the reason I say that is because one time people wanted to stop and get Cokes and I lost them. So that never happened again. I brought the treats with me, right? Oh. So I bring a little, a little lunch box, you know, those little portable lunch boxes. I have a Pellegrino, I'll have a, um, a Coke, a Diet Coke, a Dr. Pepper, bottles of water to make everybody happy. I don't want to lose them. Um, so they actually feel like they're being driven around, they're being driven. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. I'm their chauffeur for the day and we go through the town because I really want them, especially if they're from out of town, I want them to be able to preview what's out there. So we'll take them by restaurants, we'll take them by the parks, we'll take them by the beaches, we'll take them by the bay. We have this big pier that we built here that's absolutely magnificent. So I try to give them a full figure, a full, yeah, full, full focus on what we have here in town. Um, when we go to contract, we email our clients a list of our vendors, and that would include restaurants, uh, uh, painters, um, any kind of contract that you want. It's landscape people, candy uh, men, and... right? Do you do that as well? Uh, we do, but not everyone does. So I think it's a really great idea for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what it does is it just sets you apart from everybody else because agents don't do this. They'll call and say, "Oh, I need to get a." Uh, a contractor for XYZ. Well, they already have the information in front of them. And if they, don't, if they call and don't have it, we resend it to them as well because they know they've been given the list by us of the different contractors we have. Um, we had a call on one buyer, uh, the, in fact, the guy that bought the house from South Africa and his, uh, he had a friend go stay at the house to get some things taken care of before he came over. And he called me one morning at 6.30 in the morning, said, Jack, I need to go to the hospital. How, where's the hospital? So I got in my car, drove him to the hospital, waited for him and brought him back. So all those little touches matter because you're really taking care of people on a personal basis. Now, does that happen all the time? No, but if they need to be picked up at the airport, we'll go pick them up at the airport because it's what we do. Sometimes they can't get a rental car at the airport. They come back down here, they get a, a car. Uh, we take them to a car place. We'll also set up hotel reservations um, at the local hotels and at, at local restaurants, ask them what kind of food they want. So we sort of, you, you mentioned that you have a concierge. What does your concierge do? Uh, well, Christina does <laughs> just about everything. It's a pretty long list. Uh, yeah. Mainly uh, just doing the footwork uh, of every thing that needs to be done for our listings. Uh, not so much buyers yet, although I'm sure that's coming. Um, what we were finding was because we're, we're so service heavy, our admin team would be doing a lot of running around instead of being in the office doing the behind the scenes work. So we essentially put Christina in place to keep the level of service with the clients and then keep the admin group uh, more in the office doing what they needed to do for the market. Got it, got it. So if we have an out of, out of state buyer come in, we will go fill the refrigerator up with food if they're driving from another spot. So we'll put in lunch meat and uh, we only use boar's head. I know it sounds ridiculous to say it. You guys have boar's head up there? I don't think so. What, okay. what is it? The boar's head is, has no chemicals, no, no preservatives, no nothing. It's whatever it is, it is. So if you get turkey, it's turkey. It's not pressed meat and that type of stuff. Oh. We bring in bread, mustard, mayonnaise, 
Uh, we'll bring in sodas and drinks. We'll put on a fresh bouquet of flowers. Mm -hmm. so, that, so when they arrive at the new house, um, after they've closed, they see exactly, they're, they're, they open up the refrigerator and it's full of stuff for them. So it's uh, well, that's a great idea. Have, right? I mean, it costs 100 bucks, 150 bucks. But you know, the bottom line is when they're spending, spending $900,000 on a house, really, what does it cost you to do that, right? That's great. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, Oh, we also have a, a local <laughs> Italian restaurant. Yes. Not a restaurant, uh, uh, I guess a gourmet food store. It's called Bizarro's. And we'll go in and pick up packaged food that they can throw in the microwave or throw in the oven. But we also deliver, with that, we'll deliver um, forks, knives, spoons, paper plates, cups, maybe a bottle of champagne, something like that. So that when they get here, that they have a, a, a fresh meal for themselves when they get here. Mm -hmm. And we have another client that comes in um, from uh, Ohio two or three times. No, he comes in two or three times a year and we'll stuff his refrigerator with food and juice and milk as well. And it's just sort of what, because they've become friends and you know, who wants to get in on a 10 o'clock flight? You have nothing to drink in your house. So we just do things like that. Um, we do pay a 30% referral fee to absolutely every single agent that refers to us. Um, and I learned that the first time that I went to um, KW uh, to uh, uh, family reunion. Uh, it was one of the things that I heard, you know, I walked in and this is, you'll understand this. You know, I, I saw on the big stage and you walk in, it said God, family and business. Well, I knew I was home when I saw that. I mean, those are my, my three priorities as well. So um, I, I was really thrilled when I saw that. And the young lady got up, I think she was from South Carolina. She had moved to South Carolina from way out west and didn't know a soul like I didn't know anybody here um and she talked about how she took care of people when they got there the reason I do a 30 percent referral fee is because then I give you the 30 percent referral fee and you'll tell an agent in your office that I do a 30 percent referral fee and that agent will tell somebody and tell somebody and tell somebody now out of pit we've gotten what are we fourth level five levels yeah we're about five levels deep on referrals mm -hmm. from agents referring us to different agents in their office. So they'll say, I need somebody in St. Petersburg and you would say, call Jack Smith. So we'll give your agent a 30% referral fee, but we will also send you a hundred dollar gift card. I don't know, considering the level of service that you provide, Jack, I, I think <laughs> I'm paying you to take care of our client. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's just what we do because, and we only, go, we only go four levels deep on that. So we've got the customer, that's the referral, and who, if you referred it, we also send the referral agent that sent it, that sent another again, you know, all the referral down the line. So everybody gets a taste of the money. I mean, really, it costs, when you're making a, I don't know, for us, it's a $30,000 commission. It costs us maybe $500 to $1,000 more to do this. Okay. But now we have, instead of we have one agent working for us, we've got five agents working for us. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, what else? The closing gifts. Yeah. Um, any agent also that sends us a referral, besides the 30% referral fee, we will also send them a Starbucks card and a thank you card. And we do hand thank you cards to every single person we speak to all the time. Um, uh, DJ, I mean, not DJ. Um, DJ was just in here. I apologize. Jake and Sylvia just went to pick up another round of Starbucks cards. And I don't know if you know this, and I learned this from Ellie. You take track of the serial numbers on the Starbucks card, right? You take a picture of it. And she once a year will go to Starbucks and say, has this been used? Has this been used? She cancels that card because who knows if they didn't throw it away or never going to use it. And she gets new cards. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That. Right? That's interesting. There, there you go. Another little tip to save yourself a hundred bucks on cards. Um, <laughs> Let me see what else I've got here. Um, closings. We always go to closings to the title company. You don't do them. You do them electronically now. We, we do. Still and do and we, we agents do not go to closings. There's no physical closings uh, oh, at all. all. Even um, before COVID? No. No, we never had a closing roundtable. Agents were never involved. Uh, most agents kind of forget their clients on closing. Um, wow. We did. We had, we had a really, really great practice that we used to do and I think we should we should pick it up again we used to visit clients um, on closing day with a moving box 
So have, you know, like you say, you fill the, the fridge with food. So we would have like the stuff that you need for a move, like mm -hmm. paper towels and toilet paper and uh, cutlery. So all the things that, that sort of you, you pack away and you don't have when you move. Um, we, we stopped doing that. We should we should do that again. But the actual closing, like the title transfer, the agents are not involved. Okay, okay. So here we still do personal one-on-one uh, -on -one closings. So we go in with uh, roses for the title agent because she's done he or she's done all the work, and we really don't care whether it's a guy or a girl. We just take it. It's just what we do. We take in a custom-made pillow as a housewarming present for the client with their zip code. It'll say my happy place is either St. Petersburg or their zip code or something like that. Um, we also normally take either a bottle of wine and Jake is really good at sourcing people with what kind of alcohol they like. Um, and we'll bring a bottle of booze as well. Um, many times we'll stop by after and uh, after they've closed just to check on them. And we literally just go to the door. We don't call them or anything. We just show up and say, hey, just checking on you. Are you okay? Is there anything that you need? You know, the DTD2 thing has really worked well for us. Have you guys implemented that pretty strongly up there? The, there, there's a few of us who have, uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a way of calling your database and breaking it up by individual letters rather than going A to Z because you usually don't get to Z. And even if you start at Z and you work back, like the, you know, LMNOP tends to get uh, forgotten. So it's a, it's a system of calling your people that takes the most common letter and the least common letter and that you're always calling those letters. So it's A and W, B and F. Right, right. This week it's B and L. This week it's PL. So just it's something they could start if they're new agents or even experienced agents. And even if you haven't talked to the people in a while, we've had some people that we don't get on the phone all the time. And every once in a while they'll pick up the phone. It's just good that they hear a voice from you. You're just checking in with them to make sure you're okay. We just want to stay top of mind with people um, that we're here for them for all their real estate needs and anything else they should possibly need. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that that's definitely, I mean, you guys have kind of been living that, but but through COVID, that's definitely become a lot more evident because not everybody needs to buy or sell a house. But if you're calling to help with something yeah. that ha doesn't have to do with the sale, uh, right. and, you're, and you're, you're doing it because you genuinely care, not because you want to get business down the road. Well, I actually, we actually had somebody when COVID first started, it was, a, I don't know how Barbara Rose was, maybe she's 80 years old. And I called her and said, Barbara, how are you doing? She said, I'm really not liking this. I can't get some of the food I want. I said, well, what kind of food can't you get? Well, I have my favorite cereal I can't get. I said, what's your favorite cereal? She told us what the favorite cereal was, and we had it delivered to the house. So, you know, th those little things really matter. And then she called us back and said, I have a niece that's moving in the area. Would you help them? So I just find that the, the Kelly, even though I did a lot of this stuff when I was in mortgage banking, I, I'm retired from Manhattan as a mortgage banker, um, this Keller Williams systems and the things that I've learned here and our culture has certainly elevated what we do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The last so, thing I'll have to say that I'll have Sylvia talk about is that we have a huge online presence. Um, you'll see if anybody friends us, if you feel free to uh, friend me at the Jack Smith group or Jack Smith on, on Facebook, you'll see some of the posts that we do. Um, we hired a really good branding company that set us up about what, a year and a half ago, year, year and a half ago, whatever it was. So we're branded um, very strongly. So we, when people see a bow tie, they think of us. I can't tell you how many people on PIP have sent me bow ties, which I absolutely love. I mean, it's just sort of my moniker, right? So, you know, we tie that in with all that. Um, but Silvio and Jake have really done a great job with our video. So we hire a videographer. We create a story. Um, and we want to make it interesting instead of just in being a video of the house. Um, and, and there's a QR code on here that you could send to your folks if you want that I sent you. Last page. It's the last page. Yeah, I got it. We'll, uh, okay. we'll, well, I'll, I'll make sure everybody gets a copy of this. Good, good. And so we send the, Q so what we do is we try to make on our videos, we try to make them very interesting. Why don't somebody else tell you a little more about the past couple we did. It was really if you look at him, you'll, now that you recognize Silvio, you'll see what I'm talking about when you see it. So you tell him what you did. Yeah, so um, when it comes to, well, they said in, by 2022, this is back in 2019, they said by 2022, video marketing is going to dominate the media. And then with the pandemic coming into effect and Zoom blowing up so much, I mean, we're on it now, you know, that's kind of pushed everything forward. So now 
video media is the number one content if you're if you're pushing out media and you, you the thing is we're paying for eyeballs that's what we want we want people to notice us we want people to see us and the, you know the trick to that is also not to become stale because you know there's listing videos out there and granted they're good and they're done in high quality but at the same time you got to capture their their attention within a five second span so we were always brainstorming ideas we wanted to set ourselves apart from other agents and so, you know, we could do the standard introduction. Hello, this is Silvio Rodriguez. This is our listing at 123 Banana Street. Uh, come inside. We could do that, of course. And sometimes that works and people still want to check it out. But we've seen that if we do more, you know, write a story kind of brief, very brief, because you only have their attention for, you know, five seconds. So you want to engage them quickly and then transition to the house. So we do about a 10 to 15 second uh, intro and uh, there's some videos on the pamphlet that we sent to Irene that she can once you scan the QR code you can watch them on your phone I recommend watching the 460 Capri Boulevard that was a waterfront listing um, another waterfront listing was 64578 uh, four, Ave that's right on St. Mm -hmm. great it's right on the intercoastal it was a great property and the thing is you want to highlight these properties and what their their character is so if it's a waterfront property why not rent a jet ski and show off the waterfront. That's what you're paying for. You might as well highlight that. So, you know, you know, so we we work with a, a great guy who uh, runs a company called Hover Imaging. We give him all the credit because he has all the tech, really. I just come to him with ideas. He helps me bring it to life. So you can watch the video, but I'll, I'll give you a brief synopsis of what happens in the video. When you when we're listing a home for 60 Capri, for uh, for instance, you're 10 minutes, you're not even 10, you're five minutes from the beach, three minutes from the beach, 10 minute walk, three minute drive. So let's start the video out on the beach. Let's highlight that, how close you are. So, you know, the, the, the video kicks off and a bottle is on, on the beach and I find it and there's a message in the bottle. And what does it say? New listing. You know, who else is doing that? I don't know. So we just do it to set ourselves apart um, from other agents and honestly build our reputation. Our, our reputation means everything to us. And if we're standing out on that front on video marketing, on top of the seven levels deep of service that we provide, then, you know, I think people are really going to remember us. So we just want to be different in a, in a positive light. And so I think video marketing is the future people. That's what people want to see. You know, you, yeah. you can you have an online presence, have an online presence is very important. So you got a lot of information there. I hope it wasn't too much for everybody. Are there any questions that anybody has or anything that we can answer for you? Uh, Jack, uh, once I send the, your your background over to the agents, I think they might they might have a few more questions. Um, okay. I do have something though because you you had this great uh, pre so appointment and then pre listing process. And then I think because we got off on a tangent, we didn't really talk about uh, a lot about what you do once you actually have the listing live. Are okay. there any, you know, aside from the usual marketing and videos and, you know, we know that like that part will obviously already set you apart. Um, mm -hmm. But is there anything else, like what are any of your special things that you do? I mean, for, for a while before COVID, if we had a really, really stressful prep of a listing, uh, yeah. we, would bring, we would bring in a massage therapist into their, their the seller's house so they could have a massage once uh, they were done with the house prep. And obviously we can't do that anymore, at least not for now. Um, I love that idea, Irene. Irene, we don't do that. I love that idea. We could have done that for, for the guys, not that they would have gone for it, but that's, I love that idea. I think that's a great idea. So to, to de-stress them after yep. they've packed the house up and they're ready to sell it and or you know, maybe, they, or maybe after it's sold, because they typically have to get out of the house for for the yeah. period. So whatever, whatever point makes sense. Yes, I love that idea. We have never done that, and I go, I go once a week for massage. So I, I know that I'm, I'm I'm never sick, other than I got COVID last uh, year ago May. Um, but I'm never sick, and I'm convinced it's because they work all that crap out of my body. I mean, I'm just convinced <laughs> of that. Um, and it also. Um, it also just gives me quiet Zen time for an hour, hour and a half, you know, self-care time we talk about, right? Mm -hmm. um, to ask, answer your question, I think it's the constant nurturing we do throughout the process. Um, uh, and, and when we're visiting with people or checking in on them, um, and at every and most every in the, every conversation we ask, how are we doing? You know, how yeah, are we doing? Important. You know, how are we doing? Is it because sometimes you don't know if you missed something, and that gives somebody a really uh 
maybe they're not super happy about something. They just need to bitch about something. They just go on to, to say what they have to say, right? So I think that that's another thing that we do. Does anybody, Julia, do you, do you guys think of anything, anything else that we do in the process that's different? On the process of... Uh, Once it's listed, what do we do till it goes to contract? We the, the most important thing is that we keep in touch. Yeah. Very, yeah. very close in touch. Jibby is saying the most important thing is that we stay in touch. And we stay in touch. Jibby is really good about it. Julie is really good about it. I'm good at it. And Jake is really good about it. Um, but I'll say, by the way, did you talk to so-and-so? Did you talk to 460? We talk about another thing that we do might, might help you guys. When we have a group text, because we're all nodding to know what's going on with the house, with the customer. We don't have it in as their name. We use the house address. Mm -hmm. So we'll put 460 Capri Boulevard as the text with all five of us in the text with the customer as well. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Makes it easier to keep track. It's easy. It's easier for us to keep track when you, you know, we normally have, to, you know, not, not, not as much as you have going on. We normally have 10 to 15 transactions going on at the same time. Um, so for us to track it, we just found it easier to do that. Um, our real problem that we're having right now is finding, we have, I don't know, Jordy, what do you got, 20 buyers you're working with? Oh, she's got a lot of buyers that she's working with. And Julia's our buyer's agent. Um, so we don't have the property. So we're all on top yeah. of the MLS all the time looking for the properties. You told them, you told them about our closing gifts. Yeah, I did. I mentioned um, that. Yeah, I talked about the closing gifts. Um, any other questions? Yeah. I did, that, did that answer your question? Yeah. Jeff, this is Patty Hansen. I have a question. May I? Hi, Patty. How are you, gorgeous? <laughs> oh, I'm doing well. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you on here. Um, I wanted to ask, you had said that you have something called the commitment um, yes. versus the promise. Could you talk yes. about that a little bit? Well, I really, really stole it from um, Tony Baroni, but it really is, made, I'll tell you what, we'll write, I'll send it out to you. How does that sound? Okay. Does that sound good? Good. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, good. that'll be great. And we I have actually, one more question. Go the, ahead, Patty. The branding company that you used for your um, recent branding. Yes. Could you share the name of that company? Sure. It's called Marist, M-A-R-E-S-T, branding. And she's, huh? M-A-R-I-S-T. 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 She's in Nashville. And she's a young lady, very spunky, um, uh, I'll give you a little example. So she's very millennial, very, very millennial. So when Je I didn't know that she had done all the branding, got it all done. Jake and, and, and uh, Silvio told me it had come through. And I said, well, why didn't she call me and tell me? So Jake called her and said, you know, Jack likes to be called and let things are know going on. Stop texting him. He wants to hear a phone call, a person. But, you know, you and I, I'm certainly much older than you are, Patty. But I want to hear from a phone call for somebody to say to me, by the way, your work is done. I mean, to me, that's just seven part levels. Of the, part of the service. Right? Yes. Yeah, right. But the millennials don't do that. They live on text and live on whatever they live on. I don't know what they do. I have no idea. But I think that that's an important thing to know that that we all operate at a different level. And I think, Irene, to your point, depending upon the level of the buyer or who the buyer is or the seller is, we have to know, we have to speak their love language. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. We have to speak their love language. So, you know, as much as a disc profile works, um, I think it's really, really great. But I think it's also trying to figure out that you're making that human connection so they don't feel like they're working with brand X, for lack of yeah. better words. You know, we, we've established... Keller Williams has established a great hold. We're number one in our market center, I mean, on our market area across the board, you know, by huge, because we work hard. But we also had a really, really, and we also had a really, really good team leader who trained a lot of us well. And I think the magic of all that is that they recognized uh, what we could do before we could do it. And I'm sure you're good at that as well with your, mm -hmm. with your, with your team people. You see the talent. Like we don't know we're talent until we're in the middle of it. They say, oh, you're talent. Well, what does that mean, right? You just, you do, we, we adopted all the KW things because my, my mind was blank. Divya's mind was blank. Jake had never done real estate. Julia had never done real estate. And the fun part of our team is that now we have people coming to us to ask to join the team. We're not looking for talent. They're now coming to us. That's great. Right? So, um, you know, you set, set an example. And I have to tell you one thing that I just love it when you speak in the morning. You always speak oh. with such clarity and clear and you come with concise information for all of us. And 
I'm really proud of you and all your success. Oh, it gives us a lot you. of a lot really of stuff to work towards. You know? <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, we, I, we know you work hard. We we do. You know, we work hard and we make it look easy. So so before we wrap up, because we want to be conscious of your time and really appreciative, is there Thank any you. other question that anybody has? You've got Jack for a few more minutes. Uh, maybe Jack, somebody from your team can put your contact information into the chat just so they sure. can mm -hmm. copy it if they need to. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Anybody so else? Any questions? No. And my phone, I'll give you my phone number as well. I think the other thing too, Irene, that you talk about things is that we pick up the phone all the time. You saw when the phone rang, Jake got up and, and took my phone and they all take my phone and they go ask and say, I'm sorry, Jack's at a meeting. Can I, can I help you? So we answer all our phones all the time. We normally start um, with a group text. Jake is our group leader and he'll start with the group text and is outlining what's going to happen for the day. So we all know, and that's normally between 6.30 and 7 every morning. Sometimes 6 o'clock today was at 5.45, but I happened to be up, so it was okay. Um, and he outlines what our job is for the day or what are we doing for the day. Um, and I think that's another thing that helps us. Um, and we really do pick up the phone all the time, all the time. If we're sleeping or we're eating, and I tell people when we go on a listing appointment, the only time that I won't visit with you on the phone is if I'm traveling, if I'm asleep, I'm with a client, or I'm eating. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and I think that's another key to our success. My phone's ringing. <laughs> there, you go. there you go, see? Another key to our success is that we answer the phone. I mean, I learned when I came to Florida, um, I don't want to, put, how do I put this non-disparagingly? I'll just say it the way it is. When I came, you know, in Manhattan, you have to get it quick because there's 50 other people doing the same, saying the sell, same mortgage that you're selling, right? So when I came down here, if you just show up, if we can get a contractor to show up, they have the job. Wow. If you pick up the phone, you can get the listing. You know, we do a lot of cold calling as well for people to call us back. So we pick up the phone as soon as we can. And I think that's really something that's very important. And I've watched too many agents that I know, they just let the phone ring. I'm like, what are you letting the phone? That's the business. I start, right? Any other questions, Irene? I might think of some more after I go through uh, the presentation that you sent us. Uh, okay. I think everybody else is being their, uh, their good old Canadian quiet self, but they might have some questions for you as well. David, okay. did you just want to say something? Nope. Oh, no. He's just, Dave is just giving us our, his thumbs up. Jack, thank you so much. Thank you to you and your team for your time today. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you didn't catch it for any reason, uh, Jack's team is in St. Petersburg, Florida, around that Tampa Bay area. Certainly a, a great spot for Canadians to go visit when we can actually cross borders comfortably and uh, and not worry about, about COVID. So definitely I'm going to be coming to see you, Jack. You watch. I'll be there. I can't wait. And I tell you what, we have a lot of Canadians down here. So we'll keep you in mind as well. Not that we haven't. We just, I know what happened when COVID started happening last year. We have Canadians literally selling their house for $100,000, $200,000 less just to get back across the border because everybody thought they were going to die. Wow. Right. So we have a lot of people that go back and forth and you guys still can't go out of the country, right? Well, we can, but it's not easy. Right. Okay, fine. So, but we certainly will keep you in mind for all our referrals as well. Yeah, wonderful. We, we I'll, see you, well. Well. I'll see you on the morning call. I can't wait. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.